Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Waypoint Books haul. A haul where these aren't for me, these are for you, in case you wanted to buy any of them. They are books that are either new releases on my radar or recommended to me by other booktubers and therefore I feel comfortable recommending them to you. The links to all of them will be down below but these are the ones that I specifically bought in April for those aforementioned reasons. So let's waste no more time and let's go through the books. I'm going to start with the books that were recommended to me by other booktubers. There are some newish releases in here but that will just kind of Venn diagram over into the next pile. So in the meantime, the first one I want to talk about is The Henna Wars. This is an LGBTQ young adult romance about a young girl called Nishat who her parents have said she can be anything she wants so long as she isn't a lesbian, which suggests trigger warnings for homophobia. I've heard really, really good things about this. It came out in the US way before it came out in the UK. So I've only just been able to get this in for myself as well as for Waypoint, but I'm really intrigued by this one. It looks really cute. It looks really wholesome and we love some LGBTQ rep. So here's hoping it's that way and less of the homophobia because we, we don't love that. As a premise, it sounds really intriguing. So well, that's the first one. The next is The Bone Shard Daughter. This is your classic high fantasy, I think it's YA borderline adult, epic, emperors, thrones, battles, you name it. All the people that I watch specifically for their fantasy recommendations have recently been reading this and really enjoying it, so I added it to my list. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but this is definitely something that I would read, as opposed to reading widely. Like, this is the genre that I fall back into, and this is certainly a book that I would want for my shelf, so that's why I got that one in. The next one is House of Hollow. Again, this came out a lot earlier than it has here. I think it's been out in the US a while still. This is like a gothic-y mystery YA. It gives me certainly Wilder Girl vibes, but I don't know if it has the same kind of sci-fi elements that Wilder Girls did, but I'm really intrigued by this one. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by how tiny it is as well. So if you need some more short reads in your life, I'm sure we can recommend this one to you. The next is another LGBTQ romance. This is the falling in love montage. Sorsha has a simple plan for all the long hot summer before uni. Party, watch horror movies, and forget all her troubles by kissing girls. Between getting over her ex and dealing with the pain of her mum's illness, Sorsha feels she deserves a break. Enter the scene, Ruby, rom-com fan and optimist. Ruby is the prettiest girl Sorsha has ever seen, but Sorsha doesn't want to get into another relationship. So Ruby challenges her to try a summer romance, but with the serious parts left out, just like in the movies. But what happens when the falling in love montage ends? So again, sounds really cute. I love a little LGBTQ romance contemporary and that's exactly what this is. So it sounds great. And then the last one of the YouTube recommends is Mina and the Undead. There were quite a few of my favorite booktubers who got the arc of this, who really, really enjoyed this. Mina arrives in New Orleans to visit her estranged sister Libby. She loves nothing more than a creepy horror movie and can't wait to explore the city's darkest secrets. Vampire tours, seedy bars, spooky cemeteries, disturbing local myths. Mina lands a part-time job at a horror movie mansion and meets Jared, Libby's gorgeous housemate and fellow horror enthusiast. But the perfect summer bliss is broken when she stumbles across the body of a girl with puncture marks on her neck, clutching a lock of hair that looks suspiciously like Libby's. Someone is replicating New Orleans' most brutal supernatural killings. Mina must discover the truth and prove her sister's innocence before she becomes the victim of another myth. So we've got vampires, we've got gothic mystery type elements, and it has, it, it's not sprayed edges, but where the edges have got like a darker trim to it, it does look like it's got a weird sprayed edge effect, which is really intriguing. This again is YA. I don't know the trigger warnings for this one, but it does say suitable for fans of gothic YA murder mysteries at the bottom. So it's all my favorite phrases. Um, and that's another one where they mention horror movies. So maybe there's some content in there for you. The next are new releases. So I don't know as much about these ones, but I got them in because I was really, really intrigued. So the first one we have is Witches Steeped in Gold. This came out two days ago. So haven't had a chance to really read up on this one, but I'm, it looks great for the start. So we have, Iraya Adair has spent her life in a cell heir of an overthrown and magically gifted dynasty. She was exiled from the island nation of Ica, but every day brings her closer to freedom and vengeance. Jasmine grew up in a world dressed in gold. 
with stolen magic at her fingertips. Daughter of the self-crowned Diane, her existence is a threat to her mother's rule, but Jasmine has no intention of dying. Sworn enemies, the two witches, enter a deadly alliance to take down the woman who threatens both their worlds. But revenge is a bloody pursuit, and nothing is certain except the lengths Iraya and Jasmine will go to to win this game. This is a fierce and thrilling story where dangerous magic reigns supreme and betrayal lurks beneath every word. It's also a hot keys book, which means I'm going to love it because I love that publisher. They always seem to come out with my, my yearly faves, so I'm really, really intrigued by this one. My mum mocked me when she watched the last time I did this by saying you're intrigued by everything. I am. I'm easily intrigued. Consider interest peaked and just accept that I'm going to say it a hundred more times before this video is over. I can only apologise. The next is The Unbroken. This is another high fantasy. It has real Gideon the Knight vibes, which really intrigues me. So we have Terrain is a soldier, stolen as a child and raised to kill and die for the Empire. She owes loyalty only to her fellow conscripts. But now she has sent back to her homeland to stop a rebellion and the ties of blood may be stronger than she thought. Luca needs a turncoat, someone who can sway the rebels towards peace whilst Luca focuses on what really matters, winning back her throne. Through assassinations and massacres in bedrooms and war rooms, Terrain and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation, but some things aren't for sale. So it sounds really, really intense. LGBTQ rep and author of colour, which we love. Something a little bit different. I'm really disappointed that my copy arrived with a crinkled corner, but we'll just have to deal with that. We have Dial A for Aunties. Originally, I thought this was a romance, but I think it has murder mystery elements to it, which is really intriguing. So when Medi Chan accidentally kills her blind date, she turns to her aunties for help. They're meddling. Okay, so that's, again, this book is just not where I thought this was going. Their meddling set her up on the date, so they owe her. Although hiding the goddamn, dead bo goddamn dead body is going to be harder than they thought, especially when her family's wedding business has the biggest wedding of the year happening right now. It turns out the wedding venue just happens to be managed by Medi's ex, aka the one who got away. It's the worst time to see him again. Or is it? Can Medi finally find love and make her and make her overbearing family happy? So we've got weddings, romance, potential murder? and meddling families. We love that. So the next one is The Summer Job. Again, this is brand new. I don't know anything about it, but I was told by my mother that I needed to get books in that other people would want to read as well as books that I wanted to read. And this looked like a really cute little contemporary. Have you imagined running away from your life? Well, Birdie Finch didn't just imagine it, she did it. And the life she's run into, her best friend Heather's. The only problem is she hasn't told Heather. Actually, there are a few other problems. Can Bertie carry off a summer job at a luxury Scottish hotel pretending to be her best friend, who, by the way, is a world-class wine expert? And can she stop herself from falling for the first man she's ever actually liked, but who also seems to like someone else? It's not for me. But I'm sure there's someone out there that would really enjoy this. The next one is Malice. Again, seeing this go out everywhere as arcs, was really disappointed to find out that the main cover underneath is just black and not that weird lime green. It's an intense intense green um but i appreciate nonetheless this is another fantasy so we have once upon a time there was a wicked fairy who cursed the line of princesses to die a curse that could only be broken by true love's kiss utter nonsense let me tell you no one actually cares about what happens to our princesses i thought i didn't care either until i met her princess aurora the last heir to the throne the, f the future queen her realm needs one who isn't bothered that i am the dark grace abhorred and feared by the mysterious dark magic that runs in my veins Aurora says I should be proud of my gifts and that she cares for me, even though it was a power like mine that is responsible for her curse. But with less than a year until the curse kills her, any future I might see with Aurora is swiftly disintegrating, and she can't stand to kiss yet another insipid prince. I want to help her. If my power began her curse, perhaps it's what can lift it. Perhaps together we can forge a new world. Nonsense again, but we all know how this story ends, don't we? Aurora is the beautiful princess, and I... I am the villain. So another one is the one that only literally came out yesterday. So Victory is Greater Than Death. This is a sci-fi and I think it has LGBTQ rep in it as well. Tina Mains has never worried about being ordinary. She's always known that she's the hidden clone of a famed alien hero and one day soon her beacon will activate, finally making her dreams of saving the universe and adventuring among the stars possible. But it turns out that Tina's destiny isn't quite what she expected. Things are more dangerous than she's ever imagined and everyone in the galaxy is expecting her to actually be brilliant and legendary survivor Captain Tho Ar Argent Argentian? 
Argentian. Sci-fi names are always way too hard to pronounce, but I give it my best. Meanwhile, the Royal Fleet is losing the war, badly. Their starship is on the run and they can barely manage to escape Earth with the planet still intact, and Tina is just Tina. Luckily, Tina is surrounded by a crew she can trust and her best friend Rachel, and she is still determined to save all the worlds. But first, she'll have to save herself. So, sci-fi space adventure. We love that. Doesn't say anything about LGBTQ rep, but I, but I feel like it does have it. I don't think I'm pulling that out of nowhere, but maybe I am. Maybe I am. Spin the Dawn is another one that has been released earlier in America than it is out in the UK, I think. So this is a BIPOC author fantasy. On the fringes of the Great Spice Road, Maya Tamarin dreams of becoming the greatest tailor in the land, but as a girl, the best she can hope for is to marry well. Then a royal messenger summons her ailing father to court and Maya seizes her chance. Disguised as a man, she travels to the summer palace in her father's place to compete for the emperor's favour and the coveted position of imperial tailor. If Maya's ruse is discovered, her life will be forfeit, but if she wins, she will achieve her greatest dream. Yet nothing could have prepared her for the challenge ahead, to sew three magic gowns for the emperor's brides to be. One from the laughter of the sun, one from the tears of the moon, and one from the blood of stars. Accompanied by the mysterious court enchanter, whose piercing eyes seem to see straight through her disguise, Maya's journey will take her to the far reaches of the kingdom, seeking the sun, the moon, and the stars, and finding more than she ever could have imagined. So it's definitely YA, it's definitely going to have romantic tropes, but it looks really cute, and it sounds very kind of Mulan-esque, but with Mulan meeting Empress New Clothes, which I'm here for, to be honest. And it just sound, yeah, sounded great. One that I'm really, really excited about is The Khan. This is about a Palestinian woman whose husband is like the leader of a mob type family. Um, when he is shot, she then takes over the mob business um, and basically has to run it in his stead, find out who killed her husband and, you know, just generally be a badass. It has like murder mystery type stuff in it, its own voices, it's a debut author and it just sounds epic. It just sounds epic. So I'm really, really excited to read this one and won't be mad if this doesn't leave the shop anytime soon because I want to read it. Speaking of which, we've got a couple more hardbacks that are more into the on my radar as opposed to new releases side that I'm also really excited about. So the first one is Tall Bones. Before we start talking about Tall Bones, although the premise sounds great, the front cover upsets me. This is the, the front cover. As you can see, we've got the title. That's the way the church should look though. Why has it done that to me? Why has it done that to me? Anyway, this is about a young family who return to a place called Tallbones. I don't know if they have family associations there or they're trying to escape something from their past, but Tallbones is not the village you want to move to. It sounds like it's going to have real kind of like Christian culty vibes. Definitely gothic, definitely murder mystery-esque, definitely spooky slash thriller. Really, really intrigued by this and yet I haven't heard anyone else talking about it. So it is on my list and I am excited. The other one which is also murder mystery thriller-esque is Who is Maud Dixon? This is about a young woman, not Maud, but who works for Maud Dixon who is a famous writer and the assistant desperately wants to be a famous writer as well. So when Maud Dixon goes missing or dies in a car accident or something horrible happens to her, the assistant steps into her place finally taking the limelight, but it is not as simple as that. Sounds like it's gonna be tense and I'm really intrigued by that one. It takes a lot for a thriller to kind of get under my skin, but I feel like these have the capacity to do that. So we live in hope. I've got a couple more paperback thrillers as well, which also sound really intriguing. So with the last one to die, um, Neve is in London for a summer of fun and freedom, but young women are being attacked across the city and she quickly discovers they all look scarily similar to her. Can her new friends all be trusted? Can she shake off the feeling that someone is watching her? Will she stay one step ahead of the killer or will she be next? Is the last one to die. And then good girls die first, we have, the night began with blackmail, eight o'clock, Port Grave Pier, can you keep a secret? Ten teenagers lured to a derelict carnival, each one with a dark past they are determined to keep hidden. As they start to die, is it an unknown killer they need to fear, or each other? Mind games, murder and mayhem, how far would you go to survive the night? I don't know if you can tell, but this month I've just really been in the mood for thrillers, and there have been loads of really great thrillers coming out, so we love that for me. We also have In The Quick, which is a really bizarre, I don't know if I included this in the last video, but I just want to give it another shout out in case I didn't. But essentially, this 
this is a sci-fi in that they go to space romance in that it's two very difficult people learning to get along mysteries in that they're finding out about their families and their like the legacy of what happened to them and there's like murder elements to it um, it's also like really really small which kind of intrigues me but essentially yeah so in the quick i'll read the description but i know there's just like those elements and that's kind of what sold it to me so june is a brilliant but difficult girl with a gift for mechanical invention who leaves home to begin with a grueling astronaut training at the national space program younger by two years than her classmates at peter reed the school on campus named for her uncle she flourishes in her classes but struggles to make friends and find true intellectual peers Six years later, she's gained a coveted post as an engineer on the space station and a hard-won sense of belonging, but is haunted by the mystery of Inquiry, a revolutionary spacecraft powered by her loved late uncle's fuel cells. The spacecrafts went missing when June was 12 years old, and while the rest of the world seems to have forgotten the crew, June alone has evidence that makes her believe they are still alive. She seeks out James, her uncle's former protege, also brilliant, also difficult, who has been trying to discover why Inquiry's fuel cells failed. James and June forge an intense intellectual bond that becomes an electric attraction. But the love that develops between them as they work to solve the fuel cells, Fatal Flaw threatens to destroy everything they've worked so hard to create, and any chance of bringing the Inquiry crew home alive. Both a gripping narrative in one woman's persistence and a charged love story. In the quick is an exploration of the strengths and limits of human ability in the face of hardship and the costs of human ingenuity. Plus it's super cute. So there's that one. And then the last two, there have been loads of non-fictions about trying not to be racist um, coming out. But two in particular that I really wanted to get my hands on were The Black Friend on on being a better white person when frederick joseph was a black student in a largely white high school there were many hurtful comments that he often let go now he and 14 other prominent artists and activists discuss their experiences of racism in their teenage years and beyond offering himself as a friend to the reader joseph explores everything from cultural appropriation to reverse racism and white privilege both a conversation starter and a toolkit this is an essential read for committed anti-racists and newcomers to the cause of racial justice alike. Um, and the reason I picked this one up is because I've got hood feminism in my TBR for this month, but I really want to get more short essay style reads, especially around anti-racism and activism, because I know that I can be doing more. And I think that the first place to start would be to read up on those. So that's that one. And then I also got dis um, We Are Displaced for similar reasons. So in this powerful and emotional New York Times bestseller, Nobel Peace Prize winner and activist Malala Yousafzai shares various stories of displacement, including her own part memoir, part me communal storytelling. We Are Displaced introduces readers to some of the incredible girls Malala has met on her many journeys and lets each tell her story. Girls who have lost their community, relatives and often the only world they've ever known but they have not lost hope. Longing for home and fear of uncertain future binds all of these young women but each is unique. In a time of immigration crises, war and border conflicts, We Are Displaced is an important reminder that every single one of the 79.5 million currently displaced is a person, often a young person with dreams of a better, safer world and it includes an afterword by the author. So that one also just sounds really, really intriguing. So that's it. I did really try and like cram in as much as I could into the 20 minutes this time. If any of these books sound even remotely intriguing, click those links below, help support me and my content and enjoy a new read because these just sound epic. Um, and if there's anything that you want me to get into the shop or think that I should be trying to read for the shop, leave that as a comment below as well. Keep me in the loop about any new releases you're really excited for. And other than that, have a nice day. Um, the next. Thank you. I wanted to wait until you were talking. Yeah, that's fine. I would just like to say before you leave, because really this is for you and not just the camera, whilst I really appreciate being handed both a muffin and tea, I now do not have the hands to lift up the books to show the kind people the books that I'm trying to show them. Yeah. You know, that sounds like a you problem. I knew you were going to say <laughs> that. I knew you were going to say that. Even Mozart knew you were going to say that. Did you want me to put your tea somewhere? No, it's fine. I've got a little table here. I just wanted you to know that you have inconvenienced me. Cool. Good so we've got LGBTQ rep. My cat is trying to eat my muffin. This is not for you. And you've licked it. This little man is trying to is trying to steal the muffin. 
You can have a little bit, but I don't want you eating the whole thing. And now I'm gonna actually drink my tea and eat my gobbed on muffin. <laughs> 